Welcome back to Forget About Dre, guys. I am so excited about this segment. In the spirit of Interracial Love Week. It's, what? It's not inter- it is? No, it's not. I made it up, but I, <laughs> I thought it was a good excuse. You panicked. Shut up. I thought it was a good excuse to bring our partners on. Yay! And talk about a topic that I think probably doesn't get um, enough spotlight in this world. And it is interracial couple life. And you can clearly see we have, well, this is like the UN right here. <laughs> That's right. Or the United Colors of Benetton. And um, so I'll introduce uh, this entrepreneur and social media queen and love of my life, Sophie Aww. Louise Hughes. Over here we have actor and screen practitioner. All right. I'm going to get this right. Come on, come on do it, man. Do it. Visiony, yep, Lavadour. Yeah, wow. yes, very beautiful. Well yes. Daryl's bloody beautiful. Better half and mama to the babies, beautiful babies. <laughs> and then we have the apple of Gemma's eye, superstar bass player, Mr. Kyle Ezekiel oh, Mercado. <laughs> We're great. Oh shit. <laughs> So, guys, um, we've never done this before, and we just thought this would be a fucking cool idea is to get these guys on and just chat about this. But before we actually start this, Daryl yeah. has some facts. Yeah. He's some a facts facts guy. Guy. That's it. Daryl's a facts guy. <laughs> yeah. He's got some facts that he's going to bolster and literally kind of make sense about why we're doing yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to start with like um, the number of interracial marriages in 1967 was only 2%. All right, so think about now, uh, 2005, the last information is 2005, 8.4%. And then 2020, it's up to 15.1%. Ooh. So it's on the rise. So it's, it's, it's on the horizon for everybody. So it's, it's relevant. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to make it relevant. And it. Tell, tell, pe- <laughs> tell people that it is relevant. It's, it, it's, it's fucking relevant. It's happening. Oh you can't stop it, right? So um, public approval was only 5% in 1967. Oof. Think about living in those times would have been Jesus. very interesting. Uh, 2000 was up to 80%. Wow. So not only is it on the rise, but public approval is, is going up. Yay, yeah, yay for us. We just got to get a Tinder for an interracial Tinder. Is there a thing? Yeah. Uh, t- oh, I don't know. Or is it just Tinder? How would I know? I'm in a loving, committed relationship with this beautiful woman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. <laughs> Better that delete that account. <laughs> um, another couple of interesting stats. Uh, people uh, people who, who, who have higher education are more likely to be in an interracial marriage. Whoa. Oh, that, is a that makes a lot of sense. It's a good, isn't it? It's a <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> we can end it there. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But, but, but um, migration being one of them, like people studying overseas and all that kind of stuff. And, and migration is on the rise. So one, it goes up by 1% to 2% a year. So that's not just by you know, Mexicans crossing, crossing the fucking border. It's actually people just moving around the earth. So, um, so just by default, the amount of people who are intermingling, I guess, is um, on the rise by one to two percent. So it's a real thing; it's happening. Yes. And um, do you think BBC porn has probably helped that? <laughs> um, I don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> he had to go there. There's always he one always that's fucks always it up. Dre. It's always shout Dre. out to Woods. Shout out to Woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you got some other facts. No, no just just one more. Just okay. just let me. So I want to talk about. Um, uh, babies, right? Oh. So the, the 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 result, and you guys would be interested. Everyone, everyone wants to have them. The um, when uh, got them, yeah, <laughs> we've got them. So, so um, there's 130 million babies born every year, right? Um, and in each baby, there's there's 60 uh, new mutations in the genes, right? When uh, multi, when 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 the pool of gene and DNA information is from uh, multiple races, the the, this is sounds like a, such a point extra thing to say, but the, the, the pool the pool of adaptation is greater. So therefore, the the, the progeny, the, the 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 babies are stronger and and adapt to the environment faster, or they have the the ability to adapt faster. So look, the simplified version is superheroes. biracial or multiracial. <laughs> yeah, they become superheroes. We are um, superheroes. They, so they become harder, uh, better, you said faster, that. stronger. <laughs> <laughs> so look, there's good. Re- there's that's. I think that's a. It's an interesting fact, and it, because the, um, there's this thing called hybrid tenacity that people talk about in dog breeding. Interestingly enough, and um, when and the, so they've done all this testing on pure breed dogs, and they have all these issues because of the gene pool is 
minimal. Whereas you get like a dog like mine, who's just like everything and she doesn't get sick. It's that's the, the research shows that the, the, it's called, they call it hybrid tenacity is um, because the gene pool's greater and they, they have these l less afflictions as a result. Yeah, right. So there's a little bits of uh, the brown DNA is helping the deficiencies in the white. Works both ways, brother. Let's, let's, <laughs> make, let's, let's make that clear. Teamwork. <laughs> it's like a Team top, yeah, it's teamwork top makes deck the dream chocolate work. bar and everybody likes yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. So there you have it, guys. Those facts. Yeah, so g get out there and... <laughs> hard yeah, hard facts. <laughs> they were. Yeah, great. Get out it. there and what? Please finish that sentence. <laughs> get out there and just, get in a different gene... Swim in a different gene oh, pool. Oh, right. Cool, cool. Yeah. I like that. That's very PC. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just try it. That's my job. You know <laughs> it's not yours. Man. Also, just try it. Whatever. I think that's also more what's happening these days is people aren't afraid to be like, okay, not my usual guy, but I thought I'd give it a go. And mm. then all of a sudden, you, you know, you see two years later married with kids whatever like it's That's just it. you don't know what you like until you try and there's so many more things that you could be missing do you think it helps by putting if, yourself in a lane of course do you think it helps if you are part of a friendship circle where there are a few nationalities oh, in that course. circle yeah i mean and people especially that schools you know i think that kind of thing if you're going yeah. to school and especially high school uh and you're part of a very multicultural um area or group or your friends sure. uh, yeah, there's lots of different races in your in your group you learn so many different things even if they if they just your your friends or your girlfriends even just you learn so many different things about different cultures and mm. what's accepted and what's not accepted for them and mm. things that might, you know, hurt or offend them that might not for you. And, and then it's the same when you're dating. Mm. And there's so many things that you might like um, about another culture that you just didn't didn't know because you hadn't tried it yet. I, it. I can speak to the opposite of that. I grew up in Tasmania and it, and it, wasn't, very, <laughs> it wasn't multicultural <laughs> at all. You know, I mean, look, maybe. maybe you're three, lucky she's not your bro. Three your brown people in, in, my, <laughs> in my, my town, right? So the, um, I, I like what you're saying. Like, yeah. um, Don't be fearful of, of the other is what I would say. Yeah. So, you know, like um, people have so, many, so much stigma attached to, you know, POC and and uh, anything that they don't, they're not completely um, aware of and knowledgeable on. Mm. And um, you, know, you, don't, you don't learn anything that way. No, and it's really interesting because it, does, it differs from country to country. Because I know I've got my experiences here in Australia and then when we go to the UK, it's a totally different experience. Yeah, that's right. What's it like there? Oh, what's it like so in the UK? What, what's the situation like in the UK? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I grew up in like, I'm very similar to you, like grew up in a small country town. In mm. my year group, there was... I think there was over a thousand of us and there were five mixed race between boys and girls. There's only five wow. people. Wow. Everyone else wow. was white. So it was really, really white. Um, yeah, so it was, it's very much that, like you say, like I wasn't exposed to different cultures. In, in what way do you think it's different? Well, when you go to London... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go to London and it's like spot the white person. It's it's crazy. The, <laughs> the nationalities are vibrant and they're you know it's a m melting pot of all of mm. these different countries and cultures. Yeah, um, for sure. but here in Australia, it's not so much. Uh, yeah. yeah it's well, not I might. Well, Kyle Kyle went to school in Mount Druitt and grew up in Mount Druitt. So I feel yeah. like, how do you yeah. feel about that? So, <laughs> yeah, so that's bro, Australia. That's it? Western <laughs> Sydney. So ha, ha, what was that like for you? I I feel like we've talked about um, your schooling, and you said there was such a diverse mix. Yeah, yeah. Um, we there was everyone. Like I, I grew up with a lot of Filipinos. Out west, there's a yeah. lot of Filipinos. I remember living on my street. The next six houses all fillers. Right. Right. My school had everyone. Did you literally everyone? Did you want to mix with other nationalities in there, or did you stay within the Filipino community? Well, I, I kind of had no choice. Yeah. Like I had fob friends, wog friends, yeah. fellow friends. Yes. Cosby very Africans. African C right now. <laughs> yeah, <that's> super. <laughs> we'll bleep that out later. <laughs> Oh, the, the also many races just, of girlfriends. Whoa, whoa, okay, whoa. Oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> but, you know, that's definitely changed because, you know, when I was in school, it was a very small minority of brown people, Asian people in my school compared to the white population who were all into football. So, mm. you know, mm. that was, you know, completely foreign for us and really hard for us to sort of make any headway. What about yourself, Jen? Uh, we were actually... Um, I grew up in Melbourne in a suburb called Dandenong, which is very much like Mount Druitt. And um, so there were a lot of Mauritians, which is my cultural background, heaps of Mauritians, heaps of Currys, um, New Zealanders, Samoans, um, Filipinos. 
but we were still segregated in high school. Right. So the whites, which um, they called and we called them the skips, and we were the blacks, and then we had the wogs, and we had the nips. I'm not being <laughs> offensive. This is what we called ourselves. Rest in peace. Forget about Dre. Thank <laughs> you, guys. <laughs> we'll see you never. This is what we called ourselves. And um, <clears throat> we were gripped by music. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> All right. You said I could talk about anything, right? No, you're good. It's just, it's so, well, you're, not, you're not lying. So, just, so we were grouped by, by music and the skips liked rock and Guns N' Roses. And, and so as uh, someone who liked R&B, you didn't go over to that side. And if you did, it was just, it was uncomfortable. Wow. Um, and we were all quite comfortable. And, and, and the Wogs, they're like their techno. So we didn't quite go over to there because I was, you know what I mean? So we still knew our places and we were quite comfortable being segregated, uh, and I don't remember experiencing much uh, racism in high school. I, I did definitely in primary school, but not in high school. But again, we were all there, but we didn't integrate much. So, mm. so go. no dating then, like that in high school. Oh, I dated. I dated with the well, no dating at all. But um, <laughs> <laughs> and my parents, no, parents aren't no, listening. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I uh, mixed within my right. colour. Yes. But I was always attracted to my fairer. <laughs> oh, you know. Not your brown brethren. Uh, oh, I'm joking. It's okay. It's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Is that a thing though? Because uh, is it kind of... It feels weird to be attracted to someone look like your thing. brother or sister or cousin or what. So there's that in some of us. There's that thing that you actually maybe look for something that's further away from your genes. Yes. Maybe mm. it's, it could be that we were talking about it at the beginning. It could be like an instinctive DNA thing. It's like get out of your gene pool, bro. Find you know seek seek. But not everybody's like that. No, right? not so at all. It's yeah. the, the 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 anomalies so, of people that you mm. know feel that that natural organic urge to go, I want to get out of this. I want to gravitate towards another culture and mm. experience that. Give it a crack. And speaking of which, how has your partner's cultures influenced your new life, so to speak? Mm. Can I talk? Can I? Yeah, go. No, I'm asking you. I, I absolutely, and I hope they're watching. I love my in-laws. Hey. I, I have said many, many times to my beautiful wife, uh, if we split, uh, I'm keeping them in the separation. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be awkward. Because, cool. and, and it's partly, it's got to do with um, the, the cultural thing and, their, and their, vi, uh, their zest for life. Culturally, I feel like it's really enriched my existence. And they're just, um, just the whole um, Mauritian culture actually is like pretty vibrant. Like, I don't know if you know, you've ever been to like a, a, a bal or, and you've seen Sega dancing and all these, these <laughs> wonderful things that, that, that happen. And not only that, even just at, at, at uh, hanging at the houses, man, everybody's like smashing scotch and dancing. <laughs> and it's, it's <laughs> very, rum. it's just like, it, to me, identify with it. It's like, that's how I want to live my life. Mm. It's like, it's fucking energetic and it's powerful and they care about it. And then when, to, you know, I'm not into like living life passively. So I'm just like, oh, okay, I, I fit in there. And I feel like I do. I feel like when I go there, I'm like, bang, okay, cool, what are we doing? <laughs> so um, that, I, I love it. I love it's it. It's like bringing out a side of you that you just... Yeah. yeah. And also I was up for it. I was up for it. You know, like, and, and, and the, uh, <laughs> my mum actually was up for it. I mean, one, time, <laughs> one time we took my mum to, to like a, a, a family <laughs> thing. And my mum, you know, she dug into the scotch, looked as good as anybody there. <laughs> and she was having a crack at cigarette dancing too, you know, like... You know, she did all right. You know, <laughs> she 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 had a she had a go. So I think um just having a good attitude t towards trying something that's out of your again out of your comfort zone and you, you might be fearful of it, it pays off. It pays great dividends. I mean, do you, can you answer to the the the, the, the retrospective that? version how's, of how's that? How's your culture accepted, Daryl? How's your uh, oh, okay. well, Daryl's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Pending. Yeah, I, I dance. I dance with my mother-in-law all the time. I, mean, we, I love it. She's amazing. Love you, mom. I mean, my mom doesn't give you much of a choice. She's like, Daryl, <laughs> yeah, get here now, and then starts to do Sega up against him, and I just kind of go, wow, <laughs> that's my culture. This I is happening. <laughs> culture. Um, <laughs> you see, that's something. That's like confronting to a white person. Like, my mother-in-law is like, she's right up in my... Up on the whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like, this well, does not <laughs> One of the first times she met she met him, she put the Sega music on, and if you don't know Sega, it's... Uh, well, it's Ah, uh, it's like one it's, of, one it's of the sexy, kids sexy. Call it jungle music. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, it's all gyrating the hips, and my mum was all about it, and I didn't know how to say this is. Uh, she didn't have time. Yeah, this is, yeah. You should have prepared 
me for that. You do. This is what you do. And I was like, let me, I need to drink first. But I think, I think you were um, uh, uh, acknowledging uh, your parents. You were raised like that. That's, that's the work that your parents did to um, yes. coming, you mm. being from Tasmania. Mm. Um, they certainly made an effort to, to ensure that you weren't closed minded. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, you're both so. of them. I mean, because um, they're musicians, I was I was exposed to a lot of um, you know Black American music, uh, you know African music even, and and so the the idea that something brown or black is beautiful was was very much instilled early on in in my family. Even though there wasn't living breathing examples of it, mm. it was re, it was revered, you know, especially musically. And and you know, uh, my, I know my mum used to like um, describe. People, as, you know, people of colour as being beautiful, and you know, there was never any anything negative um, associated with people of colour. So, yeah, that, that makes a big difference. Anyway, big, re- big responsibility, and and for the last generation, that's that's not always been easy. You know, I know I've got friends in Tasmania who are still there back in that mode of thinking, which is which is not that which which they didn't have. Luck, you know, I was lucky that I had that influence that. Just gave me like some the permission to just go and find something and and not be scared of it, yeah. And find it, um, but I've got friends who aren't, you know, and and like they, the thing that some some of the stuff that disturbs me is when I hear things like, um, oh, hasn't your wife got lovely skin? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, man? You mean, what? Oh, do you would you say if if she was white? Would you say that about a white woman? No, you wouldn't. You say she's fucking beautiful. Yeah, you don't. Just say she's beautiful. Why do you have to say something? So this is the stuff that gets up my ass. I mean, it's because it's like a middle ground for them. Yeah, well, it's, it's they're awkward, acceptance. but it's also like a little bit passive racist. Yeah. But you know, and and um, it's hard now when they do it to our children. Yeah, now because we've got. Um, yeah, but did you want to? Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. beautiful children, and we've oh, got to cut to a break. And this, Sorry. this is such a layered topic. I know, and, we want it, and we're going to continue on it. And thankfully, we've got some time, and I'm hoping yes, that you guys do. are enjoying this topic because <laughs> it's very important. If you have questions, shoot us those comments in the comment section. Shoot yes. us the questions. We're all here. We're happy to answer whatever you want to throw at us. This is forget about Dre. Please like. Follow and share the Starter Pod Presents. This is the channel to which you are watching us on. We will be back. Yeah, Welcome man. back, sexy mofos, to Forget About Dre. If you've just tuned yeah. in, we are having an <laughs> interracial couple's life debate. Well, it's not a debate. We're just discussing no. interracial couple's life. In the spirit <laughs> like, of interracial love week, which I've just it's made up. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the impact of... <laughs> That's our, every week. Our partners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. At my house, it's every week, Every day. Man. <laughs> every day. <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were discussing the impact of each other's cultures on our partners' lives. And if you've been listening, uh, Daryl and Virginie. Yes. Oh, fuck. You're nailing it. Nailing You're it. smashing I'm that. that. Yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. Um, have been discussing their cultural impact on each other. I'm going to throw this question onto Kyle and Gemma. Oh, okay. I feel like... I get time to talk all the time, so I might throw it to you, Kyle. How does dating me go? How's that? <laughs> Fucking good luck. Okay. <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> Dig in, babe. Go on. Good luck, buddy. Okay, I'm ready. It's 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 different. Like uh, it's very much. You, I've learnt a lot of new things ever since being with you. Like there's like certain sayings I never knew about. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a good one. He whips those out <laughs> right. all the time. You, I'm like, you know this? Is she, is she the first? Like, yeah. yeah. You know, Australian like what? Girl like what? What's the saying? Go. White is what <laughs> you mean. No, I don't want to say that. <laughs> is she your first white girl? Am I the, oh, am I the tidiest um, whitey? <laughs> tidiest whitey. <laughs> Tight, <laughs> tidy tidy whitey. Wait, wait tidy let, him whitey. Answer, let him answer. Let him answer. For a serious one, yes. Oh, serious. Okay, fair enough. Um, put that in your smoke. But yeah, like. Like the, the, she'd say some things and I'm like straight through my head. I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. Like what? What's an example like, of a saying? Uh, Cause we got plenty. Like, oh, um, yeah, got plenty. she's right as rain. I'm like, yeah. rain. What does that mean? <laughs> so you're literal. Like his, you're literal. N- well, yeah. first, first, I, I never really, I've never heard that term before, before meeting her. And I'm mm. like, ah, oh, okay. Now I get it. There's and a few, isn't there? There's a few. Like well, what's other examples? Oh, we, we, we do all the um, Cockney slang. So, what, what's oh one Lord! As soon learnt? as you go to Tasmania, I'm like, I'll just step back and wait for someone to explain what the fuck's going. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. about to learn well, for subtitles. Because <laughs> yeah, that, that's a whole other nightmare. Because not only are we, are we doing the um, 
you know, the the the, the, the rhyming slang and all the the the, the, the Cockney hangover. Yeah. We actually talk like, hey, I'm running. You're right. What are you doing? Are you good? 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 Are you like he's totally yeah confused. absolutely i mean dre is forever saying that i'm like an 80 year old woman i say things all the time like you couldn't swing a cat in here or oh yeah. you could get a bus through there and dre's like what the fuck are you about? he's like why would i want to but it but a but yeah but it wouldn't <laughs> actually and depending we, on the cat and when we go back to england literally within five minutes of being in the living room with my parents i'm like full mank and dre's like i've not got a clue what's going on yeah. like i'm like does anyone do you want a brew does anyone want a brew and dre's like what are you talking about yeah. <laughs> i'm like are we gonna fight <laughs> <laughs> so <take> my shirt <laughs> off. <laughs> Yeah, we, we can. Uh, we could probably have a complete conversation where, where you wouldn't understand very much at all. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, like the language thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've we, you got some language things that Mauritian's got. Like, uh, it's more like sa- it sounds like it's not because I know a little bit of French because I, you know, I lived in Senegal for a while, so I thought I'm going into this thing like like I'm armed, I'm You're ready. Covered. <laughs> but the French they speak. Yeah, the crew. No, it all sounds like yeah. it, 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 like bang, bang, bang. And like, oh, I don't understand any of what's going Baguette. on. You know what was really funny, actually, when I was meeting Dre's mom and his mom's sister for the first time, I'd asked a question, which is quite a typical white girl question when they have a brown girlfriend, of does your mom have a Sri Lankan accent? Because I was intrigued, because when the Sri Lankan accent is quite thick, sometimes I can't understand it. So Dre was like, no, no, she sounds full Aussie. <laughs> I get that, and I'm like, your mom is not full Aussie, <laughs> like at all. None of them are yeah. full Aussie. She's full Aussie to me, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Uh, we've got a question from our viewers, uh, Jorge. Jorge, oh, what, amazing, okay. what amazing food have you discovered from your partners? Oh, oh let's go. Let's go one by one. Where one by one. Start. Where do we one start? One by one. Oh, shout out to Josie, Kyle's mum. Um, oh my gosh, she's the most amazing cook. But um, there's adobo. Yum. There Yum. is um, oh the amazing uh, meatloaf that she makes. Um, oh the spring rolls as well. Carl's doing <laughs> the lumpia. Oh, what about you guys? Ah uh, man, poisson salé. So the thing called poisson salé, which is like uh, salted fish rice. It's it gives me life. Kyle's so excited. Yeah, and uh, he's like rice. So uh, bread. Bouillon bread. bread. Yeah, which oh, is like, uh, my, yeah. Talk to me, Ginny. My dad makes his own alcohol. That gives you life yeah. as well. <laughs> the coconut rum. The coconut rum. I'm really glad that my came dad up. Makes it's his so own. good. Can I say that? He doesn't yeah. sell it. It's illegal, honey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's your favourite British food, Joe? Oh, <laughs> Sunday roast. Oh, I was, was going to say that. Oh, you guys. Roast. Sophie, I, do you cook it? You yeah. would smash a Sunday in. roast. Oh, wow. Yorkshire bunnies, they're the best. Wow. Oh, Mine's yeah. got to be egg hoppers with sambal. Like, oh, oh yeah. sambal. Oh, my yeah. word. Sambal. So good. I never thought I'd love simplistic food until you go over there and it's made made by the mummers. Yeah. You know, with love. That's yeah. the, that's yeah. the same thing. It adds, adds you this know? other, you know, Variable of warmth. Yeah. To yeah, but you take it too far. Like as soon as we land in England, Dre's like, "Can I have a bacon butty?" <laughs> I'm like twelve bacon butties <laughs> a day. <laughs> Need to I know. And you're like, on. it takes me six hours, Dre. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> like, no time. I know I can't shit, babe. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm backed up. Hey, you know what? Back to curry. Uh, back, back to curry. <laughs> back to curry. <laughs> <laughs> you got to balance. Oh my god. You know what? I wanna I wanna <laughs> do something crazy and fun with you guys. Are you guys up for something? Fun? Yeah, of course. All right. We were talking about, before we did this segment, we were, th- we were talking about what can we do with you guys that, you know, because we like to play games with our guests and we thought, what can we do with our partners that A, isn't going to incriminate us <laughs> and B, is going to be funny, right? And won't end in divorce. No, that's right. So we thought impersonations. What better way <laughs> to get you guys to roast us by doing an impersonation of us for our viewers? Absolutely. So Gemma's got some uh, some setups. I wrote down a couple of setups today just so that we had, you know, we could get the ball rolling. And wherever you go with this is fine. You just be yourselves. I love improv. Well, no, you, you be oh. them. <laughs> <laughs> improv is so great. Be yourself, but be them. But yeah, and, and be really good at it. Okay, no, it's fine. No, it's, fine. <laughs> it's fine. All right, Sophie, we might start with you, my love. Okay, all right, Sophie. 
impersonate Dre justifying an extravagant branded piece of clothing he really <laughs> wants to buy. Babe, right, just just listen, just listen to me. I can't be the Aussie accent. So it's only $300, but in five years' time, it's going to be worth $12,000. i am going to be able to Vintage. sell it. Don't worry, it's the last one in Australia. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Yeah. Literally every time. And then he buys it and he'll go, I promise you it's the last one. It's the last one, I promise. Good one. Yeah, good one. <laughs> Lies. Every time. I know, that nice. jumper was one of those purchases. Oh, yeah, that was the last it? one. Yeah, or the I last, promise one. You it's the last one. It clearly yeah, works. Yeah. It works. What and the car doing? and the wheels yeah, and everything. And I got a problem, man. I got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Relax on that. I'm speaking to someone about it. <laughs> All right, what about you guys? All right, Kyle, you ready? Oh, mm. Kyle, <laughs> impersonate. Gemma, me, your <laughs> your love, impersonate my banter in between songs at a gig, but just uh, know that I'm slowly becoming Gretel. And I feel well, explain like... Explain what's Gretel. What's, yeah, what's Gretel? You better explain, explain that to people. Oh, yeah. Maybe Kyle should explain Gretel who Gretel is, is um, and then... Regretel. Someone, yeah. That's <laughs> reg regretel. Yeah, essentially, that's it. Yeah. It's someone you don't want to meet. Oh, that's... Uh, I have I a lot of friends who think I Gretel's love Gretel. amazing. <laughs> Hang on, sorry, is Gretel like your alter ego? Yes. yes. Okay. She's my alter yes. ego after I've had m multiple yeah. beverages. The key to let her in is alcohol. Shots. <laughs> There's a lot of alcohol. Shots. Fireball. So, so Beyonce, yes. okay. Beyonce, Beyonce has, has that shirt and you, you, you have Gretel. You have to impersonate yeah. me in between sets at a gig, like talking to oh, the audience, but I'm getting real Gretel. Okay, go, go, go. go. Oh, I've never been... Oh. I've never paid attention. Hey man, don't worry about it. There's no cameras. Okay, there's don't no say, microphones. Don't say that you haven't been to a gig where Gretel was at because yeah, there's been multiple cruise Sometimes I don't know what you're things. talking about. <laughs> you're just like... Uh, I'm on a Don't I'm play off. the Asian card. We know that <laughs> you know. All right? Um, just you, be Gretel then. Just be Gretel. We're at a gig. Gretel. You've just, you just played the last song. You've got to discuss the next track. Go. Uh, I, I really can't. Okay, be, be Gretel. Jen, in can you do Gretel? Because I'm really yeah, intrigued. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, only okay, Gretel wait, can do Gretel. What about like Gretel in the car on the way home? Like you come to pick up Gretel yep. and you've got to take her home because she's a, oh my she's God. a drunk uh, ass. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> drunk ass, drunk ass home. Uh, you, you, you'll be asking me a question. You'll be like, uh, do you feel like food? Let's go, let's go to Fatima's. Let's go to, yeah. let's go to Fatima's. Like and I'll be taking her and then you, you'll be like, Oh, distracted. Something else. I can't. <laughs> and then forget about Fatima. Completely. It's very exciting. Do you love me? <laughs> That's you. You, 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 you get those eyes too. <laughs> Fatima. Um, <laughs> shout out to Fatima. That's all, that's all yeah, yeah. Out. Well, you know what? It's accurate because yeah. I love Fatima. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have to get you really drunk tonight and I'll post Gretel to my Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Look, if she has to come out, I'll do it for research purposes. All um, right, DB. All right. Okay, Virginie. We're, we're, Virginie. Okay. Impersonate Daryl giving the kids the birds and the bees talk. Oh. Have you had that talk yet? Well, yeah, I've got four kids, man. Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. All of them. <laughs> Do you hear that? Four kids. Not the one year old. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. <laughs> if you saw the one year old, he needs to talk now. He's two. He's so. He's, two. <laughs> he's gonna be. He's gonna be a lady killer. <laughs> He's going to be a lady killer. <laughs> All right. All right, Ginny. Ginny, you're an actor. She's, she's doing the birds and the bees. She's gone to another place here. Uh, I'm yeah, because I'm trying to... I'm she's trying trying to she's trying getting into me. character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what you would... Uh, it's difficult. It is. I don't know if I've heard you do the birds and the bees with the eldest, but I know that perhaps I've... Her, okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do birds and bees. I'm gonna do one where um, the eldest is asked to go out, and so perfect. Oh, that's a good one. Um, no, that's perfect. Better. Even better. And so Daryl would be like, so he'd be doing this with his. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see, but I'm tapping. I'm tapping my my, my foot, and Aggressively. he'd be like, Ferocious. Um, so where are you going? And what time are you coming back? What's his? Uh, uh, who are you gonna meet? Um, and then uh, I need to know uh, where you're going, when you're going, and, and whose number. And have I met their parents? I need to meet their parents first before you go anywhere. And no, you can't stay over. Um, what else? What else do you say? <laughs> like it make you make it virtually impossible for, for her to have a social I'll just life. Stay home, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Pretty much. <laughs> Let's um, just watch Moana again. And it's <laughs> it's it is it is the third. And I think that the eldest is just exhausted by the end of it because it's, it's been like the interrogation room and 
and I, and I do come into her. I do come into her and I say, just make sure you've got these details written down and then present them to him. Oh, I love it's, that. It's, it's, She's it's, actually done a, uh, what was it, like a, <laughs> a, a, a presentation. To get telling what, telling where, telling when, yeah, she's telling done what time. Like a, uh, Excel. She comes out what with a PowerPoint, yeah, PowerPoint, PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation. presentation. <laughs> she's like, this is where we're going. She's then, done that. If yeah. you look here yeah. on um, yeah. screen and number then, two, you'll see and, that. And, and then the, the, the clincher is Daryl. She, she, she will give him all the details and then he'll go, right, I'll think about it. <laughs> oh, 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 dude. Oh. What a ball breaker. Absolutely. <laughs> the eldest right now would be like, yes, oh my always. God. I'll think about it. But you know what? In this in this world that we live in, I, I totally get that, my man. Mm. It's real. That's it. Yeah, it is real. We are going to cut to a break. Like and too. we're going to be back. We're going to continue this conversation for a little bit longer. If you've got any questions, viewers, people out there watching, you've got any questions about interracial couple life, shoot them over. We will be back. Stick around. Forget About Dre. What is up, voyeurs of Forget About Dre? We are back. We're doing a segment right now about interracial couple life, and we've been talking about all good stuff. We've got some caller questions, but I've got a question for Daryl and Virginie. Mm -hmm. about uh, a conversation that we had a while back with regards to concerns about your son <clears throat> growing up in, in this new world. Yeah, like, to put it in context, um, when the whole thing uh, happened with uh, George Floyd, um, I, was, I was having like kind of nightmares actually about um, my son who happens to be brown, or, or brown a part of the spectrum, about something like that happening to him. Uh, now, to put that in further context i've got like a bunch of kids <laughs> as we talked about before um you know i've got four kids and i've got one one that's really pale really, really fair. white fair whatever you don't want to call it it's and called fair <laughs> <laughs> Tidy it's pc sorry mark zuckerberg <laughs> we still want to be on the start of podcast. <laughs> um, i don't know white she's white <laughs> she's fucking white okay. okay um and then right down to 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 my son um, to and he's he's uh, you know like my my it's, wife's yeah. color maybe a shade a, a tiny shade lighter yeah a tiny shade well, obviously oh my god we just gonna be a brown white yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah. brown well, white well it's a, it's on okay it's so you've to, got it's hard to say I want to uh, yeah. obviously I'm talking lighter about my brown. son I love this more than life yeah. I'm trying to find words to describe know, so that there's a spectrum of color that happens in my house but for some reason when I had nightmares about my son who happens to be the brownest person in my in in my child of, in, of, of my children. Um, it raised the question of what, what's his life going to what's his life going to be, you know? And so we've we've had discussions about what, what the what what he's going to see when he goes to like stores. Um, you know, is that represented? You know, is he going to walk in there and just see all these dolls that are like nothing, it'll look nothing like him? So in in, in context again to that, um, his sister, his older sister, his one year old. Well, okay, so we've got very fair um, three girls and one boy and he's the darkest and the rest are quite fair to olive skinned and so they can go to the shops and see themselves represented in toys you know and that's the, one of the first things whereas he won't um it, it, I, I remember my uh three-year-old started daycare and I bought her a little backpack and I put a little picture on it I, I, I ordered it and they sewed a little picture of a little girl on it and I thought oh, I might as well just get one for for my boy but there was nothing you know what I mean? And, and I sent them an email saying, would you consider putting a picture of a brown boy on your, in your store so that I can, I can include him? And how do I have that discussion with him when we go out and he doesn't see himself? I'm used to it, but this will be new for him. But one of the things that I'm, I get a lot of, we get a lot of, is um, our, our third daughter is um, uh, Olive. And so uh, she gets a lot of, wow, she's got the perfect skin colour. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really hard. And I know where it's coming from, white people who say that they can't, they love it because they can't tan, brown people who have a problem with being brown, they, like, they would like to be whiter. But what that does is that, again, I've got a darker skin child and also myself, so that's we're just a bit too brown. And then there's the other children who are not perfect because they're, I mean, but look, they're white, so you're, you're fine. Um, so really it's I, I look at Idris and myself and, and I think that's, People don't understand when you say that she's got the perfect skin tone yeah. in front of us mm. that you are negating it or you're rejecting us basically. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. totally unconsciously not meaning yeah, to. Yeah, passive comments, mm. but right? Totally. And, and, and it's complimentary but he's right there. Mm. And it's, it's, I am having to navigate and, and say, to, say how do I 
say, can you not say that? Mm. So, yeah, Because in the back of your mind, there's, there's, there's <laughs> no fucking perfect skin colour. Yeah. Uh, when, when are people going to learn this? Like, it's, it's – why you, – if you're complimenting it, um, it, it, there's no basis for the compliment. Right? There's no truth in the compliment, like, other than – what, what, what do they usually come up with? Oh, yeah, that's right. She'll tan well. Yeah, she'll tan we well. That. That's right. That's really okay. all it is. She'll, she, well, because tan looks healthy and so that's why it's the And most people love to tan. Yes. Most white that's people right. love to tan so it's kind of yeah. easy to accept. Yeah. 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 So that, that's, what we're, that's what we're dealing with, making our son feel visible and, you know. So, we're, yeah. you know, I suppose we're charged with the challenge of helping him to, to navigate now through a life where he sees – at the moment, there's no you know, nothing he sees that looks like him. Mm. We're still going to ha- have to try to validate him as a as an entity mm. by finding. Like, we have to find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we. And, and luckily, uh, my wife is amazing at you know trying to find like dolls that look like him yeah. or you know or Uncle Dre's. Yeah, or, you know, that's exactly right. So part of it is we put we put beautiful brown people in his path for his experience, men and we have we are we're lucky. We've got a beautiful resource. His godfather is a you know, a, what would you, um, he's half African American. Yeah. yeah. So um, mixed race. Yeah. So yeah. that's it. We charge with that responsibility solely because there's no way I'm letting that kid grow up and feel like he's anything less than a king, mm-hmm. and we we're gonna have to try and help him do that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. That is incredible parenting advice for anybody really who has children in general and, yeah. and, and who has interracial children mm. for that matter as well. And yeah. you know what, he's so lucky that he has parents like yourselves which, you know, have that growth mindset and they're able to explain it to them in, in a way that they can best understand it. Yeah, that's mm. it, right. information. And we're lucky that you guys are paving the way as well, right? Yeah, mm. you're paving it for yeah. us when we have kids. Mm. Yeah. 100%. I'll have yeah. those yeah. brown dolls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> we'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? <laughs> oh, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, it's hard. Well, it's not hard. It's exciting to imagine what your future children will look like because you kind of think that, in, you know, it's going to be a blend of both of those things. But it's not when you like you really think about it. And I'm like, oh, my babies might not have my green eyes or my brother's and my father's and my grandfather's blue eyes. Mm. Like, They've gonna, they're most likely going to have brown eyes it's a recessive and gene, maybe. smaller eyes and it's like, well, not smaller, but just <gasps> different shape. No, yeah. it's just I'm normal. <laughs> it's normal. You know, and, you know, different skin and blah, blah, blah. It's like for me because I love this person, like I like it's, – it's exciting to imagine that. But yeah. for lots of people, it, that's a terrifying thing. Oh, they're not going to look, look like you. Like you. Yeah. You're going to have a kid mm. but it's not going to look anything like you and people sense. will be like – is this your kid? Or yes. looking around being like, is it? 100%. What is all that, your, all who's your matters. partner? Where's your partner? What do they look like? like all that did you how adopt? Old. Yeah. I mean, all that matters. We get that. That's, that's a reality. Did you adopt? Like Ginny's, you had, wow. you've had that experience where yeah, people look at you blonde. like, you know, are you just caring? Are you like a mate? Are you, uh, uh, what are you, are you a nanny? I've people oh, say to me, word. is that your daughter? And I'm, yes, in front of her. Yes, I'm her mother. Actually, anyway. Sophie had a funny experience nannying. Oh. Uh, you were going to say that and it's super racist. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I used to, I'll re- keep it quick. I used to look after a half Vietnamese little girl. So her dad was white and her mom was Vietnamese. And I was in Aldi one day and there was this old Chinese lady and she came up to me in Aldi. Mind you, keep in mind, this could have been my child. My partner could have been Vietnamese. She was half. And this old Asian lady came up to me and she went, why your baby look like Asian people? <laughs> Like wow. Wow. wow, that's like, a lot. Uh, I can't even remember what I said, but How did you respond to yeah, that? I can't actually remember. I think I probably laughed it off. I was about twenty-two at the time. Yeah, I don't know what really you could do. Response. What could you do? But fortunately, the mum and dad, you know, found it funny and, and took it the right way. But she must have been about ninety in her defense. Yeah, you know, oh, ninety-year-old women. We get a lot of uh, older people uh, where we live. Um, sometimes, at, like Coles at San Susie, um, some older ladies, especially, like, will be walking down the street holding hands, and they will just be looking at us like. <laughs> I've got blue hair and yeah. Kyle's Filipino, and they're like, "Oh no, <laughs> oh no, idiot. I don't like it. What no, I don't, I don't, to? I don't, I don't like it." <laughs> oh my god! We've you know, we started with the accent, so we better wrap it up. Yeah, yeah right. let's see if it needs to, we need to go. It's, it's going downhill. Close it. Gretel's coming out, <laughs> guys. <laughs> please thank Kyle Ezekiel Mercado, Virginie Lavardu, and it. Sophie <laughs> Louise Hughes for being on and yeah. being so gracious to, yes. to join us in this discussion. This discussion is so layered yes. that it's probably warranted that we have it again in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, thank you so much. We have got – who we got up next? Oh, I'm excited about okay. this guy. 
Our next guest has become a staple in the Australian entertainment industry. We're very, very, very excited to have uh, Tim Amatic, Tim Amaji, joining Amatic. us. Yes, and he's going to be playing his new single. Well, maybe even more than one. I'm not sure. Well, you might yeah. just have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. That's but yes, it, guys. you'll be hearing some live music. 100. percent You are watching. Forget about Dre. Stick around, guys. We'll be back. Thank you. Thank you.